Hello, hello, and welcome to this very special episode of the TRC Main Show of the Rag Company Podcast. Episode I've... number 14. Yeah, yeah. number yeah. 14. So we are we are clear into the double digits now. Yeah. Really, really getting there. We're, we're, getting we're almost there. old yeah. enough to make bad decisions. Yeah. Well, we're We've making... puberty. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. getting there. Yeah, let's make <laughs> it weird. All Speak right. for yeah. yourself, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, he's a late bloomer. All right, yeah. <laughs> anyway, to my left, I've got Anthony. Hello. And to my right, I've got Levi. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, why don't we get right into it? Levi, you had quite an adventure. It was fun. It was fun. So Tell us uh, about it. I flew in yesterday from Colorado. Um, I got invited to the Rupes 70th anniversary event, which was phenomenal. As you can see, I'm uh, huh. enjoying my libations in my custom etched so 70th classy. anniversary with the Rupes logo. It actually does make his diet. Everything. His diet it makes my diet Pepsi just diet Pepsi feel that better. much better. It's the classiest um, as Pepsi has ever looked. <laughs> let me just take a drink there. Nice. Um, there. Yeah. So, so no, amazing. Uh, they invited uh, the entire Italian team mm. from Rupes, from the factories. Uh, so the whole, like the founder of Rupes or president of Rupes was there. Um, they talked about all the, you know, it was just a, an amazing night. I've got video of the speeches that Dylan and Chip and um, uh, all the guys came up and spoke. It was it was a pretty awesome event. Uh, it's, there was a handful of us. Uh, detailers and industry guys that were invited, which was pretty spectacular. Well, yeah, there, there uh, weren't a whole lot of the place looked crowded in the yeah. videos I saw, but it looked like just a handful. There was of you a lot of like there was a lot of picked Rupes employees. Um, you know, the there was the uh, Italy, the Europe team. There was a distributor from New Zealand there. Um, there was a lot of uh, a big group, but then you're right, there was a small group of us that were you know invited which was really spectacular uh for one for me i was absolutely honored well that's got to feel pretty that i cool. could be there yeah. yeah um that you know i was telling anthony there are times when i'm doing these things where uh i'm so humbled by it i still feel like i'm the teenager in my dad's driveway washing a car it's all new again um, it's exciting it's, yeah like yeah. i'm i or i'm just amazed because i feel like even though it's been say 20 years has passed in my career i don't know if like psychologic i don't mm. know that's weird to say but like psychologically i still yeah. feel like i'm that little kid well like it's like it's you like know. you remember just yesterday you're washing your car your dad's driveway you black out and then next yeah. thing you know you're standing in the roof head it's like <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah 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 basically yeah, yeah. Like, and it's like, like oh like, my gosh what did i do to get what? here and yeah <laughs> yeah or or part of me goes you know five years ago i was managing a shop um that uh you know i was sweating i was hot and uh, it was just like the Rennie Doyle thing when we were at the Air Force One. Like, I followed it for years, and now I was there. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. you know, I was the first person in Idaho to buy a Rupes polisher. And that's not the reason I was invited. <laughs> but I'm sure uh, it didn't hurt. Though. Yeah, I'm but sure, I'm sure I was, it helped with the choosing. I was one of the first, you know, I was the first. I have the first polisher in the state of Idaho. Um, and that was five years ago. And so, or four years ago, and it's crazy that, here I am invited to the U.S. headquarters for the grand opening for the 70th, 70th anniversary celebration. And that was that was phenomenal and amazing and humbling and just a cool experience to be with all these guys. Right. Um, and so that was that was awesome. And then uh, um, you can check it out on Obsessed Garage. Matt posted a video of the of the Rupes tour and all that. But what was wild was that night. I was walking out, and it was me and Matt and Phil, you from Detailers Domain, um, Dan and Zach from Esoteric Car Care, and uh, Jeremy Stevens. We were all walking out, and we're all getting on the bus at the same time. And uh, it turns out Adam had paid the the, uh, the <laughs> transport driver there to take us to Parma, oh, which was a restaurant, an Italian Wait. restaurant. Very and nice. I didn't know. The other guys knew because they went on the tour. I didn't oh. go on the tour with <laughs> them for the Adams thing. I hung out and, you know, hobnob with yeah. everybody and was talking to them. And um, so then they came back and said, oh, yeah, we're going to dinner with Adam. I was like, oh, OK. So uh, that was a, a neat experience to be well, able to yeah. sit at, you know, we all got there. 
all of us just sat down at the table and started talking and just having it was weird it was a deep conversation it was like more male bonding yeah but detailer bonding so to speak like it wasn't us coming as you know i'm a product rep for the rag company or no. adam's the owner of adam's polishes or Phil Yu owns Detailer's Domain, or Matt Mormon of Obsessed Garage, or it's shared Jeremy interest, Stevens of Shine Shared Supply. experiences. Like, yeah, that, it that was it of... was just us as detailers, you know, family, kids, um, you know, highs and lows of our life. Yeah. Um, that was that was a really neat neat experience because I got to learn a lot about the guys sitting next to me, and you know they got to learn about me, and it was just it's one of those like once in a lifetime. Yeah, moments that like I'll never have those guys in a room again. We yeah. might, we might actually get them all in and actually do a podcast. With yeah, them. they actually yeah. seem pretty um, interested. So. I kept bringing out the podcast recorder and going like, "We could do this at dinner right now." <laughs> yeah. But it's it like, got, you it don't got wanna, a little you don't deep. Kill the mood. It though, got a little like, deep, and then when yeah. we were doing dessert, I was like, "We can fire this baby up, and we can record this for all of us if we want." <laughs> By that point, they're no. like. Ah. Well, yeah, you guys, you guys know, took but, a walk down real street, basically. But that's yeah, that's okay, guys, like, and there, that's great. There are certainly awesome. podcasts for that, but once again, it's it's one of those cases of like, right time, right place. Sometimes you you just enjoy the moment, living. Yeah, it. you don't have yep. to like broadcast your life, the whole Instagram. No, and yeah, everything. and it was you know that was I I felt myself sitting there, and I know Matt was freaking out, like he was. He was really getting a kick out of it. Like, he was like kid in a candy store. Yeah, like this is, he was like, he was really excited about this whole setup. And I kept thinking to myself, I need to tell my dad, like I need to call my dad and tell yeah. him what I'm doing. Like, cause he'll, like my dad, not like, I'm not saying my dad's my best, biggest fan, but he's a pretty big fan of mine. He's a good supporter. You know? and, and he, he's always pushed me to do these kinds of things and so it was neat to, you know, I talked to him yesterday and called him and he wanted to know how everything was going and all oh, that. Yeah. And I was like, you're never going to believe what I did last night. And <laughs> he was just like, ah, wow, awesome. Oh, my gosh. So you never know uh, where life's going to take It was you. really cool. The place is f- gorgeous. The Bigfoot training center. It looked yeah. um, huge. It I looked, think I heard massive. It's beautiful. Dylan said something like just under 40,000 square feet or so. Yeah, it's uh, it's yeah. Un- yeah. Be- like it's unbelievable. Under one um, roof. All <laughs> under one roof and they're already worried they're going to grow out of it. Like <laughs> once they move in. So they've already started talking about plants for the second. Well, it looks like they location. have enough employees to fill like two of those buildings. They have so yeah. many people there. It's uh yeah. It's really really cool. So that was uh that place is just State of the art, beautiful, amazing. It's going to be unbelievable when it's done. Yeah. Uh, the town is gorgeous. The area is beautiful. Did um, you? Did you? So I've so I've never actually been to Colorado. And I haven't either. To explore. I've never. I've never been there. Oh, so it's so, awesome. <laughs> so how did you? In comparison to Boise, I mean, how did you like kind of like the feel of the town? It's, you know, being well, similarities. So where it's at, it's it's very hilly, mm-hmm. but it's very open. So it's more like. Where we are, uh, it's more like Eagle, Cuna. Okay. okay. So there's some elevation yeah. it's, changes. It's, mount, but it's, it's, hills, not... it's hills and stuff, and then there are mountains around, so it's very similar. But they're not similar. Like right there. Yeah, it's okay. very similar. Um, but again, super close. We have yeah. super close access to the Owyhees, mm-hmm. uh, to the, you know, we can get up towards the back foothills here. We can get into the... Uh, Beauty of the Pacific the Galena and all that, folks. yeah. <laughs> so it's you know you're basically 20, 30 minutes away from any mountain um, in that area, which is the same. And then this town was about thirty miles outside of Denver. Okay. Um, but uh, Sunday morning, I went to church. I took a Uber to or Lyft to church and went and found this like cool little ward, and it was like that small cool. and. The neighborhood was really pretty, and it was sitting on a golf course. And I was like, I came out afterwards, and I <laughs> waiting for my lift, and I was like, this is a nice little town. This is all right. Yeah, and we went to dinner. Yeah. Uh, Matt and I went. So Matt and I flew together oh, from yeah, Vegas. Yeah, that was so funny when you said you're yeah. like, I'm at the airport, and uh, I guess Matt and I are going to be hanging out this whole time. Yeah. So Matt, Matt, <laughs> I found him when I came out of the bathroom, uh, and <laughs> so we went and had lunch together because we had like four hours to kill. So we. Uh, had lunch and then just kind of hung out uh our buddy hector uh oh, yeah. was also he was flying back to tampa and so he hung out with us and so three of us just sat and talked which was good um 
Matt edited some videos and worked on that while Hector and I were just BSing. And People it was good. that stuff out so fast. Now. Yeah, and then we got on the plane, and uh, Matt was in the boarding group before me. He was in the A group. I was in the C group, and I was like, oh, I hope there's a seat for me. And he started laughing and said he'd try and save me one. And there was. He was like, I got, I, I got you a seat. So nice. Uh, so we flew together, um, got to, uh, got to uh, Denver, and then. Uh, Matt had a had gotten a rental. I was just going to take a lift, but uh, we got a rental and we headed to dinner to with Dan and Zach from Esoteric, and we went That's to cool. a little pizza joint that Dylan had recommended in this little town in Louisville, Colorado. Again, gorgeous. Oh my gosh! I was like, I I could move here. This is <laughs> like, and I called my wife and told her, and she was like, anytime you're ready to move to Colorado, let's go. <laughs> uh, so Rupes, if you're listening, no, I'm just hey, kidding. Hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, but it was it was just a quaint, cool town. We yeah. ate some good pizza, and then we went next door, and there was an ice cream store, oh, like an ice favorite. cream shop. No you know, I'm all, wants to go I'm there. all about it. Uh, and so we had some ice cream. I had this oatmeal cookie ice cream that was oh, man. Uh, insane. <laughs> <Sounds> uh, <good. laughs> and then the four of us all drove back to the hotel. And then nice. the esoteric guys were going to play a prank on Matt. Oh, no. But it got me instead. So oh, I walk up no. to the counter to check in. They're standing there. And the girl starts telling me she doesn't know where my reservation is. She does. Is it under your name? <laughs> I'm like, well, it's either under my name or Rag Company. Maybe it's under Leviticus instead yeah. of Levi. She's like, I can't find it. I'm like, it's 10 o'clock. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, what do I got to do? So I'm texting Dylan, like, where's my, what's, I don't have yeah. a con. Because she's like, what's your confirmation number? I'm like, I don't have a confirmation number. It's supposed to be <laughs> under my name. <laughs> yeah. And oh, Dylan's no. like, it should be under your name. That's weird. And then Dan and Zach are over there trying not to laugh. <laughs> Oh man! And then Trolling finally, you hard. Yeah. yeah. And then the girl oh. goes, "I'm kidding. I have it right here. Like they told me to do this." And, and they were like, <laughs> "How we much were are gonna, they paying?" They you? were like, "We were gonna try and get Matt." I'm sorry, it backfired Matt's on reaction, you. Matt's reaction, I can yeah. only imagine what that would have been yeah. like. That would have been awesome. So, yeah. So I was like, "Don't well, do that to that maybe guy." Maybe it's man. good that they did it. Yeah. But they were. So it was funny. But then we got our rooms, and the that they, they put us all up at the Omni Interlochen, which was a gorgeous hotel. Hmm. I mean, just beautiful hotel. Um, and it was kind of neat wandering around that night, just seeing some of the people that were still up. I ran into Jose Fernandez. Oh yeah. Um, and his daughter were there. And then uh, uh, the next morning, saw Thomas Zahn, the painter, um, and uh, just ran into a bunch of people. Um, just it was fun, just kind of hanging out. And, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I I basically had nothing to do Sunday morning. We got in Saturday night. Nothing to do Sunday morning, so I went to church, came back, and then I just chilled out in the hotel for most of the day and then afternoon came back down and phil was sitting downstairs from detailers domain so I what a cool guy down right? yeah hey, stopped phil, in and, hey, if you're listening hey, we yeah. think we think you're, you're cool, cool man yeah we, we like you cool. <laughs> so it was, it was good so we just hung out and then phil and i rode to the show together um in the because they had a bunch of transport buses with big group as logos on oh, them well yeah. um <laughs> and then uh just met everybody and it was uh it was really great you know larry casola was there um Chris West, a solution finish, was wandering around. Um, Hard to miss that beer. Uh, yeah, there was a handful <laughs> of detailers, you know, uh, Tony Kiger, Man Lung, um, Kevin uh, A. Walt was there. Um, it's like the Rogues Gallery. Yeah, <laughs> Kevin Davis and his wife Michelle were there. Um, uh, the boys from Lux Detail were mm. there out of Utah. Um, Lux. Or Lux like, Auto Spa. Yeah, yeah, Lux is some. Um, they were out there. <laughs> You know, got to see Stephen Olek and a and, uh, um, bunch of the guys. It was really, it was neat to, to be able to be there, hang out. And some of these guys have been friends with for five years on Facebook. And so it was yeah. nice to be able to finally but glad like the hands. face to face. Yeah, right? you, you finally get, get to that. shake hands and stuff. And yeah. so that was really cool. And then, uh, uh, but it was just awesome. We just hung out and chatted. You know, Jason Rose was wandering around, Todd Helm, Jeremy Harding. Nick McQueen, all those guys I was friends with. You know, I got to, you know, I said hi to Chip Case, who's the head of Rupes USA. Guy right off the bat. Leviticus, how are you? How you been? Sure, dude. It? Yeah. How was the, you know, yeah. how was your flight? How's this going? You know, how was your guys' show at SEMA? Like, it was, he he was, he's up on his gate. The guy's, the guy's brilliant. And uh, it was a lot of fun. Hung out with Francesco uh, from the, he's the marketing director for the European arm of Rupes. Nice. You know, mm -hmm. we had a good talk for a while. Um, Bob and Dave from PNS Sales oh, were there. Yeah. Um, 
And uh, it was just, it was great all around. And then uh, Jeremy Stevens from Shine Supply, um, you know, got to finally meet him. Uh, we had talked a couple times on Facebook, but never actually. It's always different when you get that face to face, yeah. though. Like uh, the communications you have through text or email or whatever, yeah. it's good. But when you get a face to face, you get a real feel for the person. And well, and it, it's like you know, you guys that are listening to us and you watching us, you know, it's the same kind of thing. Like you've probably seen and heard our faces all the time, but yeah. there's something that's totally different when you get to touch hands uh, or you give a hug. Um, so it was great, uh, Nicole from Skyline who made our uh, oh, yeah. backdrop and our table. She was at the party. That's and, right. They're from Colorado. Yeah, and she, she was at SEMA, but she had to leave a day early, so she never oh. got a chance to get over to see us. So she was really bummed, so she was super excited. Thank you for to, the super sweet displays, by the way. They came out so, great. Yeah, yeah, so it was nice to finally get a chance to meet. It was funny because that day when we were sitting waiting for our flight, Matt had asked me about Oh. Uh, who who made your guys' backdrop? Who did your little table? Because it looks yeah. pretty and legit. I, said, I go oh, for, I got this, for the little booth. I got we had, this it great was great chick primo. that can do that. Uh, they're the ones that do a ton of the setup for SEMA and stuff. And so I sent her his info, and then he was standing <clears throat> with me when Dylan brought her up to introduce her. And I was like, oh, perfect, fun. Nicole. <laughs> This is Matt, who I just sent you an email about yesterday, and she was like, "Oh my gosh!" So it was. Might as well just talk now. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. it was really good, and it, and so it helped, you know, also for Matt to be able to have somebody. Um, I can see OG having a to, booth. Well, he he's yeah. not sure if he wants to do a booth, but he wants to have something available for say, um, cars and coffee or uh. something like that. That that uh, you know, because his yeah. dad's going to be moving down there now. Well, this stuff's pretty sturdy. I mean, right you can it, use so. it for anything and everything. Right. Quick setup, tear down. Well, and he's thinking like doing some Pebble Beach like style okay. level concourse. Yeah. Stuff because that they they have that stuff in Florida, and he thought, yeah. why not hit a couple of those just for fun. Yeah, um, where, the, where the climate's a little friendlier, you can get away with that stuff yeah, more often. So, so. Uh, but all in all, it was just phenomenal. Um, but then. Prior to all that was SEMA, and it was our first year exhibiting. Yeah. So what did you guys think being oh. first-timers at <clears throat> SEMA? I'm an old hand Man, at this. That um. was something. What I kind of wrote in my notes here was basically if we can, like, knock out the story from beginning to end chronologically, it kind of probably helps you remember it a little bit better because there was so much that went So first things first, down, download was, the podcast yeah. before this yes. and listen to it yeah. as we're driving down. Our on the Road podcast. Um, that was on Episode Friday. Show 13, yeah. That was on <laughs> Friday. Um, so we got in that Friday night. Yep. We got we went to in and out Yeah. We went to the house. Mm-hmm. Checked out our rooms, which was a very nice yeah. house. We rented a house down there. For that was the thing. The, the drive down was like totally uneventful. It was the easiest it was, drive, drive down I've ever. I've never had How such an drive easy back? road trip. <laughs> Drive back was a little, mm. little sketchier, you know. Less weight in the trailer, less weight in the back. You know, no Anthony sitting back there, so of course What's the that weight supposed was just to mean, like, well, it bounced. Yeah, dude, no weight back yeah. there. You're trying <laughs> yeah. to say that I well, <laughs> checked on a couple of just, pounds. Just saying, yeah. Well, I mean, you would have if you'd actually eaten all the eggs you bought. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had to throw them away. Yeah, yeah. this guy he bought for a pallet people, of eggs, saying people, he was going to yeah. finish them all. Yeah, the we all saw what happened We all went up. We went grocery shopping right after we went to In and Out Burger our first night there, and to get food for around the house. And in my head, I envisioned that we were going to probably be making a lot of food at home like breakfast and dinner and things like ah. that for the week we were there <laughs> yeah. which didn't happen at all instead nope. we end up having these giant meals every <laughs> night for you know lunch yep. dinner and you know, breakfast and so if we even if we, <laughs> I was gonna say lunch I don't lunch. remember any well, lunch well yeah, yeah. And so we had all this um, well I was snacking all day I'm oh. always snacking but he, he can't we, not snack we, so. so we bought all this food from the grocery store we had cereal milk we had I bought a, a whole carton 60, 60 you know five well, dozen eggs well everything was going great my folks are looking yeah. though and uh, well, it was my dad and john and they look over and they see you walking by they thought you were just going to pick up like a dozen maybe 18 yeah. eggs you walk by with what is called a pallet of eggs whether yeah. you want to accept this <laughs> called a pallet or not is up to you but it's a friggin' pallet it yeah. was like what yeah. f- how many well, eggs like it was, 40 no, 60 it like eggs it's, it's five six, dozen oh. and so the reason why i did that i mean just because i you know, back when I used to in my in my old bodybuilding days, back in the day, I used to eat, got the eat, shirt for it. I used to I used to eat a lot of eggs, and I not not I wouldn't eat full eggs. I'd eat a lot of the white, so I'd crack the egg, you know, uh, drain out the yolk, and then just use the white. And so I would eat, you know, anywhere from you know eight to ten eggs a day. So I thought sixty eggs between all of us. Well, you're thinking a week, yeah, so. yeah, no problem. But well, and that was the thing. We got there on the Friday before SEMA week, yeah. so. 
we had, we had four days. We before had a SEMA good, you know, amount of downtime before the actual show started because, hey, frankly, when you're getting there and it's your first time, you don't want to be scrambling around. Yeah. What the hell do we do? You just yeah. wanna, you want to be, be able to go with the flow and have a little. Well, time they said to work. your load in is Saturday morning, so we were <laughs> there ready to go for Saturday morning, and <laughs> thankfully we did because I don't know if we would have. We well, and honestly, the, the, the paperwork, um, if you find confusing. yourself going down there as a first-time exhibitor, don't necessarily trust yeah. the paperwork they give you. Just talk to people on the ground. Yeah, That seems it's, to yeah. make the difference. There's because... no real way. I mean, <clears throat> we spent a lot of time in the months prior to, you know, prior to leaving, I mean, in preparation. I'm thinking of how things are going to go, how smoothly things are going to go. Where do we park? Where do we, you know, where do we do all this stuff? And to be honest, y- you really can't overthink that that much because yeah. a mm-hmm. lot of these people that that are working at SEMA are people that were hired weeks before. So they, they, they yeah. most of they, that yeah. planning of like the actual logistics once you get down there, other than what you know you can really carry yourself and handle yourself, even that's in question because you don't know how far you're gonna be from where yeah, you're gonna well, be. Yeah, well and the, the that all goes out the window. So though. for us basically we brought our we brought the escalade and we brought yep. our enclosed trailer. Um, we had everything in it and on the paperwork they registered that they registered uh, any vehicle that you carried your products in was known as a personally owned vehicle or POV. And so one piece of paper said POV load in this time. Right. Mm-hmm. And it said including trailers pulled behind cars. Yeah. Yeah. Then and... the next paperwork <laughs> that they sent us said uh, any trailer that is pulled behind a car is not a POV nope. and goes to the marshalling yard to come in with the rest of the semis. And where's the marshalling yard again? And the marshalling yard was 30 minutes away from SEMA. Yeah. yeah. Don't want to so, walk that. So when we... So we so, were freaked out. Yeah. So we were freaked <laughs> out. So when we pulled up, like how, the best way to explain the whole situation is, um, you know, one of those, I guess one of those situations in life where everything just happens to work out in that exact few minutes or in that you know you 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 find that window and everything worked out perfectly yeah. to where it wouldn't have worked out if you would have waited 30 seconds longer and, no, that's, and i was i was so that's, stressed that i don't ask for trying to fig- beg for forgiveness yeah because i've been planning i'm the one that's been in charge of planning this whole trip with everything making sure all the paperwork was done making sure all this is done so keeping up on your mom and make sure your all that head's stuff. on like, the chopping yeah block. so basically i'm looking at this like this is gonna suck it has to it, go right it has to go right otherwise i'm gonna be in big trouble <laughs> and so i was the one sweating and then i <laughs> sat down with john and jeff that night and said all right here's our options we either just show up and ask for forgiveness or we go here and find out that we are behind and it's yeah. gonna take us but then again we have all day yeah. So yeah, and, so Jeff we said it was early, easier so, to it's yeah. easier to do something and then ask for forgiveness. So let's just go. So it also meant the difference of waking up at six thirty or being at the place at six thirty in the <laughs> yeah. morning. Yeah, for six of us to get up, five of us to get up and be ready <coughs> by six a.m. Yeah, uh, or it meant us being at the location at eight a.m. Yeah, and we mm-hmm. could wake up at seven. So all, that also was factoring and this was about 11 o'clock at night we were figuring this out (laughs) so it it was kind of yeah it kind of worked out perfectly because i mean to give you guys another like a visual example or an idea that you can kind of put in your head so where we parked and unloaded we were about i'd probably say 100 yards from our booth uh realistically about a football field's length that we were able to park open up our trailer and actually hand carry i would say literally everything i'd say about 95 percent of our booth now in comparison to that, <laughs> if we wouldn't have been there and we would have missed our window of opportunity, we would have been about a mile away from our booth where we would have either and still had to hand carry yeah. or no way we were going to carry all that money. stuff by yeah. hand without just like. <sighs> yeah, it was but, lucky. So what we did was we just pulled up, asked if we could pull in because we had to be in the bronze lot. We said we need to get in the bronze lot. They said, you got to go around. We need to be in the bronze lot. You need to go around. We're we just go to doing what's on the paperwork. Yeah, and so naturally, that wasn't We right, go to one so. guy, and, and he says, all right, let's ascend. And then another guy, a different yeah, and another guy stops us and goes, whoa, 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 where do you think you're going? We <laughs> said, we've been asking everybody on the side of the street. We need to get to the bronze lot. So we show them. We're like, we're supposed to be in the bronze lot. We don't know how to get to it because every entrance to the bronze lot has told us to come this way. Yep. Yeah. And realistically, we were at the fifth entrance of the bronze lot when we really needed to be to the sixth entrance. So anyway, they basically 
This is, hard, this is hard to visualize, people. We're sorry. Yeah. yeah. So, so, well, I'll do it like this. So It's kind of near the front where they so park all we, the cars. We the are entrance. driving down the road. We come into this entrance and say, we're in the bronze lot. And my phone is the bronze lot. And they go, nope, you got to go to the next one. We go to the next entrance. We need to go in the bronze lot. Now you need nope. to go to the next entrance. Go to the bronze lot. You need to go around. So we go around to this entrance, and they let us in, and we park the trailer right here. Now, our booth space is right about here on this little map. There's like a and little about, about 50 there. yards away. Yeah, about versus... 50 yards away. And we're like, we could literally just carry stuff through if you just let us. But, but they there's wouldn't like let us... semi-trucks yeah. going by. And... So then we just sit and we wait. We waited about half hour. Half hour. And yeah. then all of a sudden they said, follow us. And they took us around to the front. And they let us in right here. And then they let us pull our trailer up. And we just It was where the it was... Uber and Lyft and taxi area was. Yeah, so we had tried to enter the... the opposite side of that way. Yeah. And they wouldn't let us. And yeah. so realistically, we had just had to go around. <laughs> so but... long story short short guys just just don't think about it too much try to go with the flow and try to see if you can talk the talk to get yep. in and that, we've noticed that was a lot of it yeah. yeah was just if you acted like you knew where you were going act like you belong and it the don't guys didn't worry about it take no for an answer from the person you're immediately talking to maybe but move on to another person and ask and you might get yeah, a different there answer. was a lot of guys that didn't because uh didn't seem like the left hand didn't know what the right but we were able doing, to get so. in get loaded everything was set up and we were done by 10 o'clock yeah i mean yeah. short of adding product which was our towels uh oh. we had our main booth already set up and done so then we wandered yeah and i went we took you guys around to show you all the different halls you'll see a bit of that in the video I'm what did you on. think about the size of sema were you prepared oh, for that? Oh my God! It's it no. Dane is... wasn't prepared. No. Dane's ankles were about to fall. I think I think his ankles were bleeding. <laughs> we you know what I bought that He needed night? to start walking. I bought some gel insoles for my shoes, and I was gelling the rest he was of the week. Like and a it felon. was yeah. all right. Yeah. It's yeah. it's it's so over the top for somebody like yeah. you know like me who had just seen everything in, in videos and kind of you see things in pictures and typically an in idea. these pictures you see you see individual booths or you'll see a car at a booth, but when you actually stand back and look at this. You're basically, as far as the eye can see, you are seeing. Um, it's you're a seeing, mile. You're seeing booths. Yeah, you're seeing. Few things prepare you for that amount yeah. of walking, and you're probably hauling stuff while you're walking too. That's the other thing is you probably got a backpack or a bag and of swag. It's or it's a mat. Whatever. House. I mean, yeah. on Saturday and Sunday during the set or Saturday Sunday and Monday during the setup days, it is a jungle. Yeah. There there's is, like a hundred thousand plus other you're people walking underneath. Around you. you know, there's. Well, we were they were setting up. They're yeah, setting up they're, for the show, so we're going underneath. Yeah, so that was the cherry thing. Cherry pickers. We were there and, we kind of had a little more room to breathe because it was mostly workers in there just assembling everything yeah. which is the cool part about being early and having an exhibitor pass yeah you get to go in and like see before everything is all pretty you get to see the the guts of it yeah so they cool. were they were loading some cars yeah. and the next day we got to see more of the cars yeah. so you're right it was nice being there because i've never seen it like that i was no. always going as a buyer mm. and so you just see the insanity Finish. of cars it's more fun because you get to see some of the cars running like yeah you get to hear them you get to see them moving so there were yeah. there were a whole it's, it's, lot it's a lot yeah <laughs> there, i mean it's all because it's all union based a lot of that yeah. work there mm -hmm. you know through through the companies the that do a lot Freeman. of the, the moving and a lot of the uh um, transporting so most of these bigger companies out there what they do is depending on wh where they're located they're shipping in all of their booths they're shipping in all of their supplies so you're seeing these giant wooden crates i mean anywhere from you know 20 to 30 feet long you know and six feet high being shipped in yeah. and being like set a half down. a semi truck trailer for some of the smaller booths yeah. and getting bigger from there in these yeah. in these aisleways and so then people are literally just ripping apart these crates and i don't even know where they put the crates by the way mm. i don't know where they, no, they, they all get picked them. back up yeah. and they get taken back to the so, marshalling yard I found <laughs> so that out. it's it, it's really crazy seeing it those but, forklifts haul too around mm, those corners and stuff man yeah. you gotta watch out else you're they gonna move. spike through the and I, and I think it's your fault if you get hit. Yeah, so, well, pay attention, so, folks. So <laughs> it's it's pretty crazy seeing everything and then how much stuff is just everywhere. And we're stepping over people's... I felt <laughs> bad because we're trying to walk through this place, but we're stepping over people's props and products and stuff like that. And they're like, oh, Not it's on, fine. You know, around. We're very yeah. respectful no, of yeah. everybody's booths, making sure, like, around hey, things, we yeah. just want to get through or around. We don't want to mess up somebody's yeah. spot. So. But it's just it's kind of crazy. I mean... You're walking on people's floors. You're walking on people's carpets and stuff like that. And you're in your head, like, should I be walking through here? <laughs> yeah. but there's really no other way to do it. So. There's, like, a lot of plastic on everything, sheeting, just covering. Yeah. So. But then the next day, the real day, the first day of SEMA on oh, Tuesday. Wait, wait. Sorry, I wanted to cut in, though, because I was ahead. super excited. On that first day when we were there actually walking around, 
We happened to just, or was that the second day? Was, which day? The brothers, Ring Brothers. That was Monday. No. That was okay, the day was before Monday. the show started. Okay. All meshed together. Yeah, uh, it all it all gets stuck. So in Monday your head. we were walking yeah. we were walking through the performance uh, pavilion, and uh, the Ring Brothers had a charger sitting there, that, gorgeous charger uh, that they were working on, and they were using our towels to wipe it down. So yeah. that was exciting because we were walking by, yeah. and so we were able to you know drum up a conversation with one of the Ring Brothers and yeah. his detailer, and mm. uh, it was fun. We got to chat, and we had a we had some Eagle Edgelesses in our bags that we had yeah. packs that we'd been handing like out a to people. Swag bag kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. and uh, uh, so we handed those out, and it was great. You know, well, and the the so. hood was covered in like either compound or polish residue. They or just some. they it waxed it. Perfect opportunity. Yeah, they had just put a coat of wax yeah. on it. And they were okay. Yeah. yeah, finishing it up, but it was it was fun. So that was a good kind of a neat contact that we were able to make uh, while wandering SEMA. Oh yeah, and, and that uh, was that was one of the better, um, I guess examples of seeing a, a, a pro detailer do good work. Um, I just want to go into this a little bit, but walking around SEMA, yeah. you're... Oh. There you're, was some scary you're, stuff. You're, you're going to mm-hmm. see a lot of things that are going to make a detailer cringe. Um, we saw... And you don't want to, like, bash or be negative or any of that you stuff. No, because you... some of these guys that are detailing these cars are very excited to have the opportunity yeah. to be detailing these cars for the show. That's a big deal. They're yeah. happy to be doing yeah. it. But not everybody is a high-end detailer. There are varying no. degrees There's of skill levels. I'm not saying they're not bad. Yeah. Yeah. But what I'm, but but it was for us, and some of the some of you that listen to our show or follow some of the You're different channels or groups. You're probably a detailing audience. So yeah. uh, seeing some of the stuff that they were doing on vehicles or working. Now, granted, we did get to talk to Kevin Brown. Mm-hmm. That was the, cool. Of the Kevin Brown. Uh, yeah. Mr. Buff Daddy himself. Yep. Uh, we got to see him in the Ford booth, and he was yep. working with the McGuire's team in the Ford booth, working on cars. Yeah. And, and he was asking questions too. And about stuff, but they so, were they yeah. were saying, yeah, no, we're just quick, you know, one step and wax, and and that's it uh, yeah. on these cars. So it's not perfect, but they were using the right methods, right products, all that kind of stuff. But you we can were trust watching. He knows what he's doing. But we were watching guys. <laughs> On how? What do you think? What was that Ferrari? That old Ferrari? I can't remember. Like a two sixty. It was like a two fifty. It was like a Ferris Bueller. Crawling, crawling on on their hands and knees with their towels in their hands. On the so yeah, on the ground, on the carpet, picking up every single thing in the world, then taking that straight to the front of these cars. (laughs) And it was yeah, they were rubbing turtle wax all over a can of turtle wax that they'd gotten at O'Reilly's that they were. It was just like a perfect storm of. It was so hard to watch a lot of these people do it and and another thing i wanted to point out is that these cars that, that you're walking around and seeing i mean these things are, are beautiful they're all works of art these things have had so much money put in them you know anywhere from a hundred thousand dollars to a million dollars i mean they're amazing cars but when you walk in there from a, de- a with a detailer's eye and you were looking at you know reflections in the light and you're trying to see the overall gloss of the paint a lot of these cars Really, their 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 finishes are not perfect at all. I mean, a lot yeah. of these cars are swirled. A lot of these cars have scratches on them. Um, well, and which anybody is crazy who, to, who to, knows to, SEMA knows a lot of these cars are like projects that are rushed up to the very last yeah. second, and then they're then they, thrown onto the floor, and they mm-hmm. look cool, but it's definitely like kind of like a ten well, footer they situation. They plan on detailing them typically at the <clears> show, but then there's yeah. also the other mindset too, where somebody did kind of correct me when I told them how not disappointed I was in the, in the finish of these cars, but he said, listen, man, these things get haggard. By the end of the show, there's handprints, fingerprints. Oh, yeah, people, everybody. Oh, yeah, because you can touch, touch the cars. Touch cars. Like, <laughs> that's so, the crazy thing. You can touch some of these cars and get into so, them sometimes. Yeah, he yeah. said that if we, if you spend, you know, 20 hours paint correcting this vehicle to perfection, you know, for this show, in the it's first gonna be day, gone. it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be messed up again in the first day because there'll be people walking around putting their hands on it or there might be a a little like a detail company going around and wiping things down with like a spray detailer and, and, and rags. And we did see some are, dusters. Who have, and yep, some dusters. California and, dusters are alive and well. So I understand that not everything is going to be perfect there and it probably shouldn't be, but it is you know when you expect it's these, scary. Yeah, yeah, when you expect these high-end cars, and you're like, "Oh wow, these are pretty swirled." And yeah. <laughs> but then there are some. Oh man, then there are some that you see, and they are well, there's, gorgeous. Well, they, oh, there's yeah. cool the stuff McGuire's that you'll never, that, that you'll never see in that, that car show. Porsche 
993-911-400R, that red one in the McGuire's booth, was quite possibly the most beautiful Porsche 911 I've ever seen in my so life. So McGuire's yeah. did it right, though. I, you, you know they were they they were they were masking things off with the, with the red velvet rope, but... Their booth, they had these, they had these diffused lighting overhead Mm -hmm. of these cars that put like this nice oval shape. um, It lit up that that, whole thing. It it was the the same principles you use when you're doing like car photography in a studio. They use the same kind of lighting, and the wash over the car, it was just. Oh, it, it was, was so yeah, glossy. It made it look amazing. So much depth. Yeah. And then you have the, the accessory <clears throat> lights of the actual building, you know, up above all these LED lighting that you're seeing reflecting off this paint. And it was crazy. It was really an insane. And that was my favorite display of yeah. how paint yeah. should look at SEMA. Yeah, it, it was. It, it gave us ideas. Yeah. And it yeah, looked no, amazing. Very cool. Um, well, and what was the other, the, the black car that they were working on? It was a 36 we Ford up. that they oh, were working that on that was also beautiful just wicked. Yeah. Um, and you could see the amount of work they were putting into it, but at the same time, like, less hands were going to be touching those ones, you could yeah. tell. Yeah. But it was nice. It, uh, so that was fun. And then Tuesday was the start of the show. Um, so we actually, uh, you ran, you spent the whole day basically away from the booth on yeah. Tuesday. <laughs> was that Tuesday? That was the first day. No, that was when you went, yep. you went and got to do a bunch day. of fun stuff, yeah. didn't yeah. you? So, well, so no, the first day me and Dane went out shooting. Oh, that was shooting. right. You guys went shooting. So we yeah. went out shooting the first day. <clears throat> that was the first time you ran into the crowds. You yes. didn't know about yeah. the, how busy it was going to be. You knew it was going to be busy, but you're still not prepared for that. Well, and I kept saying, you know, 165,000 <laughs> people wait. attend. Just wait. Yeah. And it's like, okay, yeah. And you're like, no, 165,000 people. People descend on this three mile and block, most places, basically. Even outdoors, you're like shoulder to shoulder. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so we tried to film like little, little. I mean, we got we got a few little, segments, little videos, but little at the segments, same time, but... it's probably going to be kind of a disjointed video when I get it done. It's going to be very like, here's what we did get because man, you're just on the fly. You're trying yeah. to make I mean, it I was work. trying to walk backwards and look at the camera and try to talk while I'm walking and. And try to kind like of 50 like people walking give up some, the other way behind give you. some dialogue to the whole situation. But there's so many people, and it's kind of such a distraction to where even me, it's not just the people. I'm seeing cars, and I'm like, squirrel, squirrel, cars, yeah. cars, yeah, cars. It's <laughs> booth girls. Because it, like, yeah. well, some of the stuff we saw on Monday when we wandered around, but then we left, and they were still bringing mm-hmm. cars and oh, booths. Yeah. And I mean, they were still setting up. That was so. the craziest part. All was of a sudden, you were like, holy on cow. Monday night, you're looking around going, okay, some of these the show's starts <laughs> tomorrow and i'm looking around and i'm still seeing plastic on lots of things yeah carpet Booths not that installed. haven't been assembled at all yet just like completely blank spots and you're going is this company going to show up at all or how's that going to work i mean yeah. okay we're out in the performance pavilion i guess you know amongst the first timers and stuff part of that test is seeing if people even show up yeah so there's that but to their credit i mean i didn't see any well empty i noticed next to the Tuesday. auto fiber booth that he had an empty booth ian okay. had an empty booth next to him by the, the way people never ian, showed up great guy yeah. really like Ian. yeah ian at by microfiber way, tech ian. and yeah. Yeah. Ian, fiber if you're, if you're watching this we, had a, we had a good time seeing ian and yeah. talking to him it was awesome um and that was the other fun thing about and it his was dad just, too yeah yeah his dad dan was awesome but it was so great to fiber see guys yeah um it was it's it's great to see everybody and say hi. So yeah. you guys went out and talked yep. and just checked it out, videoed the whole thing. Yeah. And <laughs> tried And then anyway. you came back. <laughs> and we were busy. Like, oh, yeah. Our, our booth was busy on Tuesday. We were like, wow, that was a really good turnout. Yeah. We had some good people show up. You know, Matt Mormon was just a couple booths over hanging out at MTM. Yeah. So he came over and hung out for a while. <laughs> he literally and, used our chair, I think, for yeah. probably to, 45 to, yeah. minutes. To give you guys an idea, though, on Tuesday, when me and Dane left, we actually went and walked around because our booth was a little slower. I mean, we didn't really yeah. have a whole lot of people. Yeah. And so we, we left, came, you know, filmed some stuff. Left came, me came, and came, Jeff came, and John came, there. Came back yeah. in an hour and a half, and they look at us, they're like, we've been busy. And we're yeah. like, oh. <laughs> exciting. Well, this and, is exciting. In yeah. fairness, our booth was like behind a wall almost. Yeah, we were literally behind a wall at the very entrance. It was very of the close to an building. entrance, which sounds great, but then you realize because of that wall that you stuck out, you people were walking us. in the door and all they see are like these two really heavily modded Camaros and then the backdrop wall for them. And then we're just invisible behind it unless you happen to catch like a glimpse of our logo on our podium. So it was really like up to chance. Yeah, that we were literally see standing it. outside. Uh, Right around that corner with our shirts. Yeah, yeah. To what, the back of everybody. Just what so made me feel great though the logos. was hearing that the uh, the information booth at yeah. the front of the tent was saying that more people were asking 
for the where the rag company was than I think almost anything yeah. else they had. Yeah, so that like was people nice. were trying to find us. So thank you everybody who asked. Yeah, that's <laughs> it helps a lot for us. Hopefully we'll be in a more <clears throat> visible spot next yeah. year. Yeah, they'll because take notes. They'll first, remember because yeah. it was our first time. They kind of just put you in and make you. You know, it's like they throw you, you in the pond it. to swim. Yep. You better better swim, sink or swim, so yeah. to speak. And so but that so, was Tuesday. Uh, that was that like was, the yeah. first yeah. day. So, and so Tuesday, we were we were pretty happy about, about pretty how, how everything good turn turned out. out. But so Tuesday, with that being the first day, most of the people are going to be checking out the uh, Central Hall, the North Hall, the South right. Hall. They're going to be going all to the main uh, exhibits first because that's when a lot of these companies are going to be doing their, their releases of their show cars. They're going to be yeah. new products, new cars, yeah. all that stuff. So, there were a ton of NSXs and LC500s. Yeah. People, people want to be the first to post these pictures up yeah. on Instagram, even though everybody's doing it. I mean, everybody yeah. wants to be the first to post it for all their friends to see. So everybody that we talked to said, yeah, we're probably going to be slower out in the pavilion because of what's going on in the main halls. But they're like, wait until wait until Wednesday. Wait yeah. until things start happening on the second day. I mean, there was a Chiron and out in the main hall that we took a nice close a look Chiron, at. Yeah. And it was awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> so Wednesday, uh, we got up. We got up bright and early. We were all pumped. We were all excited. I mean, that was kind of the cool part about this show is every, every morning, like every night when we left, we were kind of like, oh, you know, we left the show. I kind of want to be back there. You're kind of buzzed, right? <laughs> yeah. You got that adrenaline going. Well, and it was it also you're tired because cool. you had that adrenaline going, and then yeah. it's just like you crash, and you're like, ooh, I'm I think Tuesday tired. we got in and out, right? So what did we get Tuesday? I think Tuesday we went to in and out again. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, we got like, a lot of in or did we do Capriotis? Uh, we could have oh. done either one of yeah. those. Either um, one. It was delicious. I but, mean, yeah. in and out is kind of like the default. So position, Tuesday, so. yeah, so. Tuesday was the uh, Tuesday was the thirty first, so that mm-hmm. was the night. So Monday oh, night, that, yeah. Oh, okay. So Monday now night, I know what we did. Yeah. So Sunday night, what was it? We ate in and out twice. <laughs> we didn't do that. <laughs> we have a habit, okay? Yeah. I think we ate in and out Friday night. We can't get it Saturday, here. Saturday, so. Saturday afternoon with Juan. More, I think. more in and oh, out. Oh yeah, and then Juan again. came, showed up. I and won. Then, uh, <laughs> and then uh, Sunday night. I don't remember what we did. We probably just went back to the house. Yeah. yeah. And then on the then But we were Monday, watching the World Series and stuff. That's right. So. Yeah. Uh, that, yeah, we came home and then we went out for drinks with Dylan. Dylan. Yeah. And then uh, always yeah. a good time, that was Dylan. A fun time. And then uh, and Beer Park is pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, so. that was rad. And then Monday <laughs> night was uh Capriotti's. Yep. Okay. Delicious sandwich. And that's when we had uh, Rod and Jody stop by and hung yeah. out at the house with us. Yeah, okay. From, gotcha. From Road FS. So yep. they came and hung out and just chilled at the house with us. Oh, Halloween. Yep. Now it came and out then Tuesday, Halloween. Tuesday oh, was that Halloween. Look. And that was us. <laughs> we all went to Famous Dave's yeah. with yeah. Rod and Jody. We ate, we ate a lot at Famous Dave's. Yeah, I mean, we went into that. So and then much. we thought... Let's go downtown. Let's go down. Let's just go down to the strip. Yeah, check out all the crazies because it's Vegas. Now, yeah. Martin, <clears throat> one of our distributors in Vegas, had told me, he goes, you guys should go to the go to the Fremont, Fremont yeah. and check it out. And it's even more wild. And we were like, eh, like, we're in Vegas. Like, let's check out the strip. Like, let's just go walk. Let's go to the strip. And we thought we were going to go find a spot to hang out. That's yeah. what I and thought was going to happen. Uh, no, we walked yeah. four and a half miles <laughs> yeah. and back to the I did enough car. walking during the day, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We walked an extra four and a half miles. We were following Jody uh, yeah. from Road FS. Power walking. He was a beast. Yeah. He was Jody's running up machine. and down those stairs. Just keep and he was still going to get up at 5 a.m. Yeah. and work out. Oh we, had no, we had no destination, but we but we said, hey, if we find some place, let's stop. A good Maybe grab spot grab, to Grab people a drink. Watch. And that people, was kind of the watch. goal. It's like, okay, finally, we're going to sit yeah. down here. We're going to no. grab a beer, just chill. No, it stop. was just literally a giant loop up and down over yeah. the overpass and down the, you know, whatever, yeah. through the casino, through another casino. And, oh, by yeah. the way, there was like a 918 and RWB Porsche 911 down there for a second. And, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so Jody, thank you yeah. for the workout. <laughs> yeah. That was, yeah. That's how, yeah. that was a great way. We had way. to walk off our barbecue. <laughs> that was a great that was way. basically to, what happened. To, to, so. Yeah, shed, shed, some, shed some calories while we were there. Just do sensitized to the walking before the next day yeah. so. for people wondering we didn't see any crazies we saw um we saw there was, there was there were like there was a couple attractive eight girls costumes there was in a guy total. getting arrested and we saw a couple weird costumes but yeah. I mean, other and than some that, homeless people and i was gonna say i don't think they were all costumes but uh <laughs> but yeah no then that was uh so that was halloween and that was tuesday then wednesday we were swamped that oh, was the morning so wednesday morning john flew back Mm-hmm. Came back here to, to run the yeah, store. Yeah, we were down a guy. Yeah, so we were down a guy. Yeah. And so that day it was just the four of us in the booth, and Carolyn was going to be flying in. We and, couldn't uh, leave the booth. Yeah, and we couldn't leave the booth. And it was 
insane. It was absolutely yeah. insane. But you left the booth, and oh, that was the day yeah. so that, you went and did a ton We of sent stuff. you on some missions. So that's when, yeah, so on yeah. Wednesday, while I was getting crazy at the booth, uh, my friend uh, David Patterson, which is not David Patterson from Lake Country. Although he's um, a friend, too. Also yeah. a friend. David Patterson, uh, he's from a YouTube channel. He has a YouTube channel that it's called, that's called That Dude in Blue, where he does a lot of car reviews and car vlogs. And so he texted me and asked me if I wanted to go do the Kia Stinger event with him, which we get to go drive the Kia, the new Kia Stinger. And you and I were was... all stoked about the Kia Stinger. Yeah. Like, oh, I'll see it so up that's... close and like in person that's and stuff. That's... And this uh... guy goes and drives one. You could yeah. say it's a uh, modern variant of my 06 <laughs> Hyundai Elantra. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> redefined. Yeah. Redefined. Yeah. Redefined. Uh, redefined. Yeah. 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 So I went, so I actually went out with, uh, me and David went out and we did that. And we did the driving event. Then we went out to the Ford booth and checked out Ford out front. Um, and then we talked about you know a little bit of everything. He's a really cool guy. David's awesome. And so tell us about the Stinger. And so the Stinger yeah. guys is okay. So <laughs> Anthony's gonna buy a Kia here pretty yeah. soon. What's gonna happen? <laughs> so I was, it's working. I, I was yeah. not expecting. So when we went out there and checked it out, the first thing I saw was this Kia um, drifting around this track. And I'm talking not just like kind of drifting, but I'm talking like roasting these rear tires. Fully committed. And so, when we got to choose which vehicle we wanted to drive, they said, do you want to drive all-wheel drive or do you want to drive rear-wheel drive? So you pick which car you want to drive, and then you have to take a breathalyzer oh. test to actually go and drive <laughs> oh, Because right. this is Vegas. So this is Vegas. Uh, it's definitely so, guys were drinking around. beers was, since this morning. <laughs> so yeah. it was like, funny when the when the girl told me, she said, like, literally three-fourths of the people have been failing the test and couldn't drive <laughs> these, these cars. So luckily, I didn't drink anything. So... Uh, I chose rear-wheel drive, of course, because I thought I wanted to make it a little more fun. But uh, the key, it, when you sit in it, it kind of still feels like a Kia, but kind of not because, you know, it's a little plasticky everywhere. But There's like familiar the seats, switch gear. The seats have these adjustable bolsters, so you, you press this button and it, suck, and it sucks you in. So it actually sinks you in like a race seat. And then... You have the Brembo brakes. You have um, – it's a it's a V6 turbo, right? I think is what it TT, was. TT, yeah, yeah, V6. So they basically pull you up on this line and say, all right, you're going to – Floor it, give it all. It's literally got. said, floor, floor it. it, floor it to the to the floor. And no then, elegance, and no then grace, just bam. slam on the brakes, lock it up. So I'm like, oh, okay, sounds good. So floor it. This thing puts me back in my seat. Pretty impressive, you know. I'm gonna be playing this footage while he's talking and, right now on the yeah. video on YouTube. Just and so you know. And then I slam on the brakes of so these big old Brembo brakes that this car has, and it stops on a dime. And I, it's funny because. Then you go around this kind of little twisty track where he's like, "Okay, feel free to you know you know go and you know get on a little bit, stay around you know this this mile an hour range." And I was more nervous about doing that because you actually have to sign a paper that says you break it, you buy it type of thing. So I wasn't wanting Sounds to send fair. this uh, car into a concrete wall. So I was, I was a little careful, but. Well, the course they had was interesting. Was, like you say, don't want to run into a concrete wall. It Those was are pretty all tight sections, concrete walls, and it was all so, barriers. So so anyway, we uh. We finished that for the day. The Kia Stinger was awesome. By the time I came back to the booth, they look at me and they're like, Anthony, it's oh been, my God. we're so it was, insane. Yeah. It, was, it was insane. It was nuts. Like they're all losing their voices. I'm like, <laughs> what What did I miss out on? Yeah, and, we had so many people come to the booth. Yeah. It was it was crazy. Um, and you again. such a, like a contact high from how many people are coming yeah. by and like positive and they want to well, talk. Well, and it wasn't and, like, and it wasn't just, you know, I was worried that we'd only have fans. Yeah. Sure. Show up. Not, Not that actual, there's anything wrong with fans. Yeah. Fans are great, but, but you know, you're you know, also there to we're like there make to new connections. Make new connections and, and get new buyers and yeah. expand our, our world dominance uh, in <laughs> microfiber. <laughs> well, like but, some other companies were saying, they were getting just tons of fans. Yeah, they literally just had fans else. and nobody else. <laughs> and so we were kind of like, I ah, hope we, but we literally got everybody that was interested in doing business with us came and found us. That was yeah. what was so crazy. They were dedicated and they really they like to went sell. to find us and they found us. Yeah, so that was really cool. Um, then we all piled in the car and we had to go pick up Mama Hennon yep. at the uh, at the <laughs> airport. Oh my, okay, now, Vegas the, Airport, the you kind of need to get your of, together, of terminal, okay? Yeah. Terminal one was so she was in terminal, she was in terminal one oh, and yep. we were going around terminal three because yeah. we didn't know which 
terminal yeah. she was in. We, we just went to loop. we went to passenger it's, pickup. I just want to say if there's like an American equivalent to the Bermuda Triangle, forty five minutes. Vegas airport. Forty five minutes later, we picked her up. <laughs> yeah. After <laughs> circling the airport for forty five minutes. Sport, though she's yeah. like, "Hey guys, nice to see you." Or, yeah. Sorry. We called her and we're like, "We're going back around again. <laughs> we can't get to you." She's like, "It's fine. I'm just hanging out. I don't have anything else to do." The road connects but with we the did in such because ways. we had a meeting with uh, one of our factory managers. Yep. Uh, he was him. Him and his wife were taking us out to dinner, so we needed to get there uh, and go yeah. uh, and get yeah. there by seven. And it was like <laughs> if the fact just that we wasted forty five minutes <laughs> circling. So we headed back to the house. We all changed and then made it to the Korean barbecue for some awesome Korean barbecue. That was so good. It was oh, it was really really good. And uh, I liked at one point. I looked at you and said, "I think I'm full." Oh yeah. <laughs> and yeah. you were like, "I'm not." Yeah. And you yeah. kept going, and not even like three minutes later, Anthony looks at me and he's like, okay, I'm starting to get full now. Yeah. I've this never is, heard that from yeah, this guy, yeah, ever. Yeah, he's yeah. a bottomless pit, but yeah. it was it was awesome. It's just strips of, they just kept, he just kept putting beef on our plates and just, so I mean, it was. Yeah, it was. It was unbelievable. It was a ton of food. It was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like the soup. I, there was like the soup, the soup that was, was like. good. I, I'm weird. I'm like, I like, well, I'm Portuguese, so I like, I like weird, you know, exotic, you know, fish foods. And so there was, was, like, it was like, yeah, a, it was like it was, some shellfish. It was an, and o- some it was octopus. And, there was an octopus, octopus in there, which yeah. freaked me out. I was like, I loved it. Yeah, the I was soup was really it. good. <laughs> yeah. And I was just eating the tofu in the soup. And then all of a sudden I was like, what is that? A root? And I was like, oh my gosh, that's a little squid. Like a little octopus. I was like, yeah. It was delicious. I'm going to leave him there, but I'm going to have more of this sauce. I'm like, I'll take that, Leo. It's okay to be pink. But so we did that. I mean, after that, we went back home i mean that was we were full we had a really long day on wednesday we were tired and yep. we were ready for bed and so which brought us into our next morning which was thursday thursday so we, and it was it was mama hen's first time yeah into, we had to give her we had to give her the rundown because we said hey it's, it might get a little crazy yep. and so and she's so, like okay okay yeah, having she, her, i don't think yeah. she knew what was coming so no. having her there thursday morning helped because then that allowed dane and i to do our thing and we went and ran we basically tried to do what we, i did with anthony on that other day but we hustled I think in we the made morning it a little further because we yeah. went no. earlier so but we were able to make it over to the north hall i was able to say hi to everybody we were able to, to touch base with some folks we met some and cool people it was great yeah. you know we got to you know we swung by optimum we swung by uh pns we swung by car pro and microfiber madness yeah uh we were able to uh hit flex we were able to hit buff and shine uh, we saw David from Lake Country wandering around. We were able to get to Gion, and we were able to say hi to Mr. Todd Cooper Ryder. Yeah, was awesome. when we were there in the jam booth, they were they were there, and it was like, oh, hello, I know you. Yeah, and then it was really cool to hear that they watch our videos yeah. too. So, so that was thank awesome. You guys. So Dan and, and was Todd to and then you. Zach, I got to meet at the Rupes thing. So that was awesome. Those guys are great guys from Esoteric. And then uh, I dig their whole aesthetic. Yes, like it's, and it's then cool. we uh, headed into the Westgate. Mm-hmm. And we went and saw. Oh, we went to the Rupes booth too, and got to say hi to everybody yeah. in the Rupes booth. Yeah. That was a huge signs. booth. Twenty five hundred square feet was the size of their booth. <laughs> it's a, and, it's uh, a full it's house, bigger, in there. bigger than my house. They had, they <laughs> had a meeting room, so you yeah. could yeah, you could get clo- or, you know meeting oh, yeah. room, closet, yeah. storage space. They they had it all. So and yeah. somehow yeah. they nice. managed to actually fill it with stuff. Like it actually yeah. had yeah. stuff covering all the areas. So yeah, cool. it was cool. And then we went up to the Westgate, which is where also first timers, but they try and basically kind of move you there first and then mm-hmm. move you into the North Hall. Um, so we got to the Westgate and uh, we went to G Technique yep. booth and hung out with Kevin uh, A. Walt there and uh, Eric Markowitz. Markowitz. Sorry, dude. I'm it's okay. Fun. Names. Tearing <laughs> you know, it up. It happens. But, uh, He's pretty good. I mean, out of I'll, anybody, I mean, like, Levi's, out of the, best Levi's the best that's going to remember names. So, I mean, yeah. So anyway, we got to see them, and then we actually saw Tomas of Microfiber Madness. Right, yeah. And I went up and said hi and introduced myself. Yeah. And, um, you know, because that's what we're all about. We're not, you know. Yeah, you know. At the end of the day, we all sell towels. Yeah. You read stuff online and you think it's all, Yeah. it's okay. You can be cool. Yeah. And so we did that. I saw John Clevin from Metropolitan Detail right across from us. Uh, John's a good guy. He's got a great shop, so if you're in Seattle, you should check him out. Um, And then... Yeah, and then we headed over, saw Max Shine's booth, yeah, which was fun. Uh, finally got to see uh, uh, Nancy there, uh, mm-hmm. Ping Ping. 
Uh, <laughs> we've been friends for a long time on Facebook, so it's nice to, to actually meet again. Just trying to you got so many Facebook. Friends, just trying to just, say hi. Yeah, are you, you know? are you almost at your cap on Facebook yes, friends? I, okay. <laughs> He's yeah. like yes. I'm all serious. <laughs> no, profile pretty soon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so then we, uh, but then we hustled back. But it, two hours had passed for us. Yeah. I mean, we made it back to the booth. We left at eight, and we were back by ten thirty, and we thought we were going quick. Yeah. Um, so it was good. It was a good uh, uh, little jaunt, so yeah. to speak. But then when we got back to the booth, it was all hands on deck because we were swamped nonstop Thursday afternoon. Um, you guys didn't go anywhere Thursday. I, I checked my steps. Like <laughs> I, I could didn't move. not leave the booth. I don't think we moved. Um, and yet somehow we we're still really sore from walking. <laughs> yeah. I, it was more standing. <clears throat> yeah, standing. Um, but it was great. Tons of people came. It was awesome. Uh, Thursday night, that was Thursday. Then Thursday night, uh, we met our team at uh, Top Golf. That so, was fun. Um, that was a lot of fun. Thank you to the the whole team at Top Golf for setting us all up. Uh, Top Much Golf Las Vegas. That was a uh, great experience. We had a blast. Uh, and we had a ton of people with so us it too. Was, so it was us, <clears throat> and then we had uh, Rag Company Europe with us. Mm-hmm. Yep. We had Rag Company Russia with us. Uh, Matt Mormon, who's a distributor of ours. Yep. Uh, we had David Patterson from and That David Guy in Patterson. Blue. <laughs> yeah. And David Patterson from Lake Country. We yeah. had Rod from Road FS. And uh, it was just a good... That was a blast. It was a good group. We all just kind of had fun, got to hit some balls. And uh, that was just... That was fun. Yeah. And it even if to, you can't golf... I will yeah. say the food. Anthony was the, the food worst. was like Anthony better was than awful. most. He was a horrible high, 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 high end restaurant. Yeah, and he was... could still hit the ball. Oh, so yeah, yeah. I, I'm interested um, in the food. You're talking about hitting the. <laughs> but it was fun because like you could eat or you could hit a ball or yeah. you could hang out and talk or whatever. It was funny to watch those people behind us that oh, kept yeah. taking yeah. pictures of they David kept, like, and staring and at Matt. 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 And, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> that was kind of funny. What? Um, <laughs> and then. Uh, um, no, but we, it was good. We had a good just night there. To it at a we all, I mean, point, we all got out there. We got to, we got to hit some balls, and yeah. it was fun. It was, I mean, it was, it was funny because Dennis, um, uh, uh, Rag Company Russia, he had never he'd never <clears> gone <throat> golfing before. He told us he'd never gone golfing before. So his the way he was holding the club is he had his his arms crossed, and oh. so he was asking, he's like, hey, you know, how do you hit it, you know, the right way? And we showed him, and then he started cranking him out there, and it was yeah. It was yeah. It was a good time. Well, we, yeah, like food. It, it's amazing what just like tiny golf. bits of advice can do. Cause yeah, like when I was about to swing, I'm thinking about it, and like I, I don't think the last time I played golf was within the last decade. So I'm kind of concerned I'm not doing. It. And then yeah, your buddy David, he comes over and he's like, okay, just you know, make sure you don't take your eye off the ball. And it's like stuff where you're like, okay, it sounds like you know the kind of advice yeah. you get, but then you really do it and you follow it and you keep. One arm stiff and the other one flexes, and then you actually do it, and you're like, holy cow. Thanks, David. That actually worked. That really made a difference. So yeah, it's yeah. just the little stuff. Well, and it's yeah. such a fun place because it's, you know, we had no agenda. No. We weren't, you know, it wasn't a league or anything. It was just us playing No, you're playing just hanging out and playing. I mean, we, none of us even had, like, yeah. our own pages, like, or, or you know, scorekeeping. Um, everybody was just hitting off of everybody's. Yeah games yeah. and it was nice yeah. it was fun you know and we just hit the we, hit the carts out there a few times yeah yeah <laughs> it was but it was fun and the and uh i really do like that place um mm-hmm. and it it's nice that they took care of us you know yeah. we put in for it early and and uh you know i uh, just to my aunt who helped set that up thank you very much yeah. uh, i appreciate it Hopefully we can we can continue that tradition. That's our goal. We were talking yeah. about it. Jeff and Carolyn really enjoyed I feel that like place. It's be a thing. They had fun. Jeff loves it. And so we decided we're going to try and just make it a thing every year for SEMA. Right now, as we'll hit up Top Golf and do the same thing and do our own rag company. And for those of you watching there. or listening, if you're going there and it's not SEMA, it doesn't matter. Go visit Top Golf. Yeah, that place there's is awesome. Just 33, stop on there's by 33 and... locations in the U.S. Yeah, if you haven't really... done it yet, try it. It's, I want one in Boise. It's, it's, it's like so super fun. bowling meets putt putt, except you're actually doing swings, meets ski ball. For some reason, I was thinking yeah. ski ball because of the layout of the course. Yeah. But yeah. It's cool. It's yeah. so cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's an awesome. Experience. So we did that Thursday night, and then uh, Friday morning was our was our last day at SEMA. Yep. And uh, it was just as busy. It was insane oh. how swamped we were Friday. It felt even busier, uh, and people said was... it was going to get slower, but for us anyway, well, no, it didn't. Friday we got crazy. <clears throat> we, and... <clears throat> we, I mean, around our booths, I mean, it was it was funny because when we, I, the people around us that are are the vendors 
next to us and across from us, I was talking. You know, I was I was make, trying to make friends with everybody because I, oh, yeah. I, I kind of joked around. Well, that's with, Anthony's with, with whole being, deal. Yeah, we're the kids in the corner. Let's all be you know f- the weird friends. Oh, it's know? like yeah, we're all so. being punished and stuffed away in the corner where nobody can find us. So let's just all be friends and. No, so it actually. It was... <laughs> I I talked to everybody, and they're yeah. all they're, everybody was super cool. Everybody I met there that was an exhibitor, a vendor, nicest people I've met. So there was this company, uh, Medallion GPS, and I talked to Those them. Those guys and, were actually really nice. And I asked them what their product was, and it was a super cool product that they had. And they asked us, well, wh- what do we do? And I kind of explained that you know we're my manufa- my microfiber manufacturer and distributor, and uh, we 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 sell towels. That's kind of what we do. And they were like, okay, like curious to see what kind of turnout we would got. You know, we would get and I did love the confused look on all the booths around all his of faces all of when they're watching it's just more and more people not I'm not trying to brag here it was just you're, you're watching and they're like what are they doing yeah we aren't like yeah. trying to yeah we were out. I, we might as well like it, it was almost like we had whistles and like <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, and we come. were like yeah. and making noise and stuff yeah. we weren't doing that but it was like our booth was a party the whole time like we had so many people around our booth it, it comes was back crazy to social media and word of mouth so the social media gets the initial people and then word of mouth those people tell other people who then try and come and find us and next thing you know it's just a yeah we were swamped the yeah. whole time it was funny to like when we'd have each one of us would be engaged with people talking and there were more people that we were there trying to deal with wings. waiting yeah. to like talk to and seeing the look on the people across from us in their booth, just sitting there eating their sandwiches. Yeah, and they like will, and nobody and showing times up. I felt, like I felt bad. They, well, I, like, <laughs> well, I mean, I did feel bad, but they came up to me on Friday and they said, "Are you guys? Are you guys? Are you guys like famous? Are you guys like towel famous? Like we don't understand why you guys have so <laughs> many famous. so I many people." And I, I was like, "Yeah, I think we kind of are. You know, we're a little, ta- little, little towel famous. Little towel sure. famous." <laughs> and so. Um, they were, they just thought it was the coolest thing. Yeah, because they, they'd have people come, and we were getting pictures taken and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. They'd come see us. And, and, oh, and it was really cool. I think for a lot of them, they were surprised that to that. The other companies, like, they really liked the idea. People care that much about towels that they'd actually yeah. come and, like, seek you out. And to some, it's it's just, it's important enough to somebody to, to want to come over. And, hey, you know what? We appreciate everybody who, who comes over and takes the time to find us and, you know, just wants yeah, to, was, even if it's people walking by, they see the towels on the rack. Mm-hmm. That's what also got people. They're just like, I could just touch those towels. Yeah, yeah, come over. Just the rack's right there. Absolutely, go check through the stuff. Next thing you know, people who like thought a towel was a towel was a towel, they're feeling it and going, wait a second, you guys, you guys supply this stuff. You, you make this stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're offering it up. And next thing you know, you have somebody who had zero interest whatsoever. They're walking by. Yeah, and now. They want to know everything about microfiber yeah, towels. Yeah, or they were on the fence and they had been. Yeah. Wa- they were at SEMA to to you know maybe they were a detailer, um, and you guys have seen our website and it's a little hard to go. Well, what's the best There's one? I don't know if products. this is good. Uh, you know, like this minx right here. Um, you know, a lot of people just wanted to touch it. Yeah. You know, they had never they they wanted to see it, and when they touched it, they were like, oh, okay. And then they we had little tags on them, and they'd take pictures with their phones of the tags. So FYI, that now our products that they, do not come with tags on but, them when we sell yeah, them. Yeah, it was just, just a sticker that show. we put on there, so it yeah. had the name and, and sizing and all that. But this way, they could take a picture, and they could remember, like, oh, I touched a Minx. I and, like it. Or I touched an Eagle, finally, or an yeah. Everest 1100. Or We didn't even think of the tags that we, the stickers we stuck on there being used that way, but that's what it was perfect for, was yeah. people yeah. would go up, and they'd be like, oh, that's what I want. And they'd take a picture for later to go home and, like, buy online. Yeah. Yeah, and it was that was awesome. really good. So definitely doing something like that again. And then we found out the cool part was on Friday morning when we got to our booth. So the rule there was, um, you can you could start packing up on Friday night, but you could not touch any. You couldn't move anything out of the booth till Saturday morning. Mm-hmm. Well, we got there and Friday morning, and it's, there was a little yellow piece of paper sitting on our booth that said you can start loading out as early as six p.m. Which just goes yeah. back to the whole, the rules are what you make them. Yeah, and we were like, <laughs> well, that's cool. Yeah. And so we started. So 4 o'clock rolled around. Everyone was headed out towards uh, Ignited. That's the only thing I was bummed we didn't get to check out. We didn't get to see any of Ignited because, hey, we got a job to do. Yeah, man. we had to pack yeah. up. And so uh, we, I ran around again trying to figure out how to get the truck and trailer back into the parking lot. And they were, again, not sure. Some yeah. of the guys were like, well, yeah, we're loading out at 7. And we said, well, I got this yellow piece of paper here that says trucks can start pulling in at 6. Yeah. And the guys are going like, 
yeah, I don't know what to tell you. I <laughs> uh, that, that doesn't make sense. We don't, don't we're told this. So at that point it's basically get out as fast as you can and uh, don't get in anyone's way. Yeah, basically. So that's well, what we did. Well, you're looking around you and you see all these things folding up and people driving out with all their stuff and Yeah. So okay, that's I what, guess I will too. <laughs> so that's what we did. So we literally uh, I'm not going to go into detail as to how we got out of there, but we were it able found to get its way from one place to but another. But we were able to get all of our stuff out, <clears throat> loaded in the trailer, and we were yeah. all in the car by what? 7:30? Yeah. yeah. Like we and had that was everything loaded. Was it was amazing. To move it, so. Yeah, and then we went to Famous Dave's. Yeah. Again. And yeah. had dinner again. Delicious. Um, <laughs> it was great. And then uh, so that was our, our end of SEMA. It was great. And then there Saturday is... morning, though. Oh, well, I, I wanted to point out, oh, as James far as SEMA something. goes, <clears throat> I just wanted to say thank you on that first day we were at SEMA where you're just like, oh, hey, Jonathan Ward. And then I <laughs> lost my... Yeah, I was like, keep it cool, Dane. Yeah, I'm like, cool. Dane, He's don't like, saw Jonathan yeah. Ward of Icon Stay for cool. my horror. And <laughs> don't yeah. fanboy too much. He almost fainted. He was yeah. sweating. I, I played it cool out for yeah. Well, he, he had a lot of things. nice stuff. <laughs> I was like, there. shaking hand, like, yeah, yeah, I, I know who you are. That's, yeah. that's way cool. So, it, Jonathan, if you're listening, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, it'd be really cool if you yeah. were listening. I did reach out to him on Facebook later cool. that day and said, thanks for stopping and saying well, hey. Well, that was the thing was like, you know, he, he had places to be, but he still took the time to talk with us yep. for a little while. So yep. it was actually really cool. You know who, so else, thank you. You know who else took the time yeah. to talk with us that I enjoyed? That was all because of Levi. Adam LZ. Adam that LZ stopped by our booth. Yeah. yeah. So Levi uh, Levi said what's up to him. So he came by and, and said hi. I got to talk to him just for a few minutes before he had to catch his flight. So yep. uh, we'll probably talk to him more in the future. Hopefully and that'd be really, great. Really cool guy. Yeah. And so and the then, connections uh, you make at SEMA, yeah. it's always cool to see who, you, who you're going to run into and you know, at the end yeah, of the well, day, you guys just, actually got to hang cool out with, people, and you guys right? got to hang out with Matt for a little while from yeah. Obsessed Garage. Well, that's so. like you guys were all off busy, and we're we're hanging out at the booth, and over comes Matt, and he's like, "I just got to take a load off." How are you guys doing? The next thing, he sits down, and we're all just talking about whatever, you know, cars yeah. and all that stuff. Yep. it's just fun, you know. Yeah, to, and to then of course he came Thursday night to hang out, and so that was good. But we, yeah. uh, but anyway, that <clears> so <throat> Friday night we all headed back to the house, and yep. just kind of chilled out. You know, packed up. Anthony, what time was your flight Saturday morning? <laughs> so my flight was um, departed at 6.30, but because I knew how crazy the Vegas airport was, I just wanted to get there early. So I ended up leaving the house at 4, getting there at the airport at 4.30, and I waited you know, about an hour and a half till we boarded, but I was up early. I went yeah. to bed at, I think I went to bed at 12. I mean, I, yeah. didn't, I actually didn't really go to bed. Sleep, I just yeah. kind of stayed awake. Went to, yeah. Well, and I mean, in fairness, Anthony could have ridden back with us in the car, but he actually had places to be and yeah. things to I, do. Yeah, I had to be at Sun, <laughs> I had to be, So I was, my, my girlfriend had a big work party every year. They had a huge work party in Sun Valley, Idaho, where they rent out um, half of the Sun Valley Resort, which is like a beautiful That's, resort. And so, yeah. and they had this huge party, and I told her I would be back in time. So she picked me up at... Uh, Old 12, 12 noon <laughs> from the airport, and I we went straight from the airport with whatever <laughs> I had straight to Sun Valley to go, you know, live it up for uh, another, you know, half a day. And, and as if you hadn't already been, like, on the whole time you were at SEMA, yeah. now you had yeah. more of that. So I had to, you know, because I, I still want to make a good <laughs> yeah. impression with yeah. all of her, with, no with all her in, yeah, employees. So I, I literally had Red Bull on, like, a drip line, you know, in my <laughs> veins and so it was it was a fun time. We were all going, and Levi went straight to yeah. Uh, so I so we loaded the Dane and I started loading, fixing the trailer, yep. putting everything back together, um, getting all that squared away, um, and then we were out of the house by eleven. Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty I think much. It was right about Just at eleven. All tied up, and, um, and then uh, they dropped me off. So it was Jeff and Carolyn and Dane were driving back, uh, and then they dropped me off at eleven. And that's when I ran into Matt. We went and got some food and then yeah. headed to Colorado. We ended but up having a whole was, plane ride together. Yeah, so how was your drive, though, back home? <clears throat> the drive back was... It was a, it was a family trip. It was, it was a family was trip. It was basically yeah. like being on a family <laughs> road trip. Mom I hadn't and dad done and son. one of those in a while, so <laughs> that, that was kind of fun. Son. Just chilling in the backseat. Those two were up there, and we were all just talking you know, about the experience, about all the stuff, and like all the ideas running through your head of like, oh, man, now I know what we can do for this. And, th and yep. there's yeah, just now so you could... much new stuff that, that just gets injected into your brain. And you have all these great ideas based on stuff you saw, but also just like, okay, now we, we can introduce products that would do something like that. I mean, I can't get into specifics, obviously, but it's just it, it's really invigorating having a week like that. And then 
you don't really register all the stuff you've taken in until afterwards when you have a little well, time and to decompress. Well, and you look at it, you think about like <clears throat> an eleven-hour car ride. Eleven-hour car ride, just the three of you. Yeah, you're not at uh, airport with a ton of people wandering around. I mean, you could still technically try and do that. No, but like uh, the conversations but, can get real. But yeah. yeah, because you guys were. Trapped in a car for eleven hours. <laughs> trapped. Um, Dane was trapped. I mean, it wasn't really trapped. No, no but. but I mean, like you're able to focus more. <laughs> yeah. On that, you know. Oh yeah. Um, you're not looking to see who's. You're not getting distracted by who's walking by. It was. No, you we, know, we you hashed out some really cool details of some upcoming yeah. stuff that we're going to be doing. So yeah. that was really, really cool. Locked and you guys space. hit snow. Yeah. Well, that was the other thing was. I joke like I was saying to, to Anthony. Without him in the back of the truck, it felt like the trailer and the truck. Well, you lost not Anthony gonna... and I, and that's 400 pounds, basically. Yeah, so we lost 400 pounds there. There was less stuff because your bags weren't there in the and, back of the yeah, truck. Yep. And most of the weight in the trailer had been, because we just kind of toss it in there, was in the back of the trailer and not the front of the trailer. Yeah. So <clears throat> the weight on the nose of the trailer and on the rear of the truck, it was very light there. So we got a lot of like wiggle waggle when we're driving up the road. <laughs> yeah, and then I remember I felt it. It was it start to. And it was a little, little like that on the drive there, but because we hadn't used the Escalade to actually tow. Yeah, you know, so it was the first time for that. Before, and it's so. a short one. It's not a. And yeah. normally they use a suburban. Because you're used to driving uh, with a big, you know, three quarter ton suburban. So it's the the beast, the eight point one liter Vortec, serious, yeah. you know, hauling stuff. But the Escalade, it did its job. It was good, but at the same time, like it got a little squirrely there. And I think we'll probably want to go a different route. Next time we go down there, something yeah. uh, something a little different. But yeah. I don't see the Escalade going anywhere, though. Dane wants a right Sprinter Escalade. van. Dane I, wants a Sprinter I, van really man, bad. Yeah. I don't think it's going to happen. Once you get into the Sprinter but, uh, vans, it's hard to... Mm, everybody everybody we can just get a regular van vans. yeah we can just get a regular van we get a minivan okay van. we'll get an econo line no yeah. i'm just kidding <laughs> but anyway it, it was an awesome experience but yeah we didn't get home until like 11 30 yeah on uh yeah that night and yeah there was snow and ice the majority of the drive back so yeah. not really the same scenery we had when we were driving yeah, down nice desert yeah on the totally, way down the totally different desert and there the was there was like up to a foot of snow on the ground in places it was nuts like yeah. totally not what you expect but yeah, it was a exciting ride back, and we drove a little, a little slower because yeah. you know squirrely trailer and all. But anyway, still not bad to do no. twelve hours towing a trailer, going back and hitting uh, snow, or twelve yeah. and a half hours. So for the three of you, so that was so, a good, good, yeah, good yeah. spot. But it was, but. it was an incredible experience. And if we weren't planning on going back every year after this, I would say, oh, once in a lifetime experience. But hey, we're gonna do it again yeah. and again. Next year we're gonna go bigger and again. Yeah, yeah I'm probably looking think, like uh, next... twenty more years, thirty more years. I, I'm this. looking long term at this, <laughs> yeah. and uh, yeah. there is some seriously cool potential. Well, so. we're thinking next year, you know, doing uh, a bigger booth. Hopefully, yep. if we can get in, we tried for a big booth this year. They gave us a small booth. It was kind um, of funny. We were playing the videos a lot, and we're like, "There's our booth." <laughs> we point to it in the background of the video, like. It would be here, but you know, <laughs> yeah, stuff happens. So it was. So we're going with a bigger booth next year. Yep. We're gonna try and go even bigger, in hopes that we can get our big booth. If not, we get a bigger booth. That's cool too. At the very least, let's and be if in we a can get visible, yeah. Spot and even if we get put us. back in that performance pavilion again, we're just gonna move to the aisle. Performance pavilion. It was those great. Looking, it's actually great. Like yeah. you get a lot of traffic through there, and even though we were kind of hidden, people still managed to find us. But. To be visible in yeah. the performance pavilion, that would be. And you can also have it. conversations in there. That's another thing yes. I want to point out is that unlike the main halls where it's just where it's just so much noise, massive echo chamber, um, yeah. so many yeah. people in the pavilion, you can actually have yeah, a it was conversation. Actually, it was actually not bad, even yeah. with the tires squealing outside. It was quiet. Yeah, yeah no, we had the continental we were, tire experience right we outside. We kept thinking we're like, man, it's gonna suck because there's <laughs> just gonna be like noise. But no, it was fine. We were able to carry on conversations with everybody and. Um, you know, my ears didn't hurt or anything. Well, those, like those that. F80 BMW M3s, they they just sound a little a uh, little quieter than the old E92s yeah. and stuff. So, but so <clears throat> bigger bigger booth. Yeah, possibly a car. We're gonna bring the detox set down. Yeah. Um, one thing we are gonna try and do this year though is figure out a way to palletize the entire set. Yeah. Um, yeah. If we can, you know, we just not ship that. Move everything by hand again next year. That would be awesome. Yeah, and we'll just <laughs> ship it, and then uh, either we will set it up, or we will pay somebody to set it up for us. Find a reasonable rate. 
Um, when you consider the the time and stuff it takes to set stuff like that up, well, you think about the five of us. We had the five of us there stuff. and our salaries to that were taken away from here. Yeah, to be there to set that up, we could pay somebody that same amount to yeah. set it up, and then we wouldn't have to. Uh, we could still be working. Yeah, they could be. When you dive into the cost, it actually makes more sense, you know, after a while. And yeah. you notice why other companies do that. Yeah. That way. Yeah. So, you know, you go in, you save some money, but then as good of a turnout as we had this year, yeah. um, you know, we it behooves us to make sure that we yeah. do it right uh, next year as yeah. well. And uh, hopefully we can be in the North Hall one of these years. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. Um, with everybody else. So um, make it good. But, oh, that's about it, man. So that's the story, guys. Yeah, that's, that's the it. epic. Thank recap. you to everybody that came and saw us. Yes, uh, seriously, yeah. that meant a lot. We really appreciate it when you guys, uh, you know, come say hi, come shake hands, come get pictures. Yeah, uh, you know, it means a lot Add because us as friends on Facebook. Yeah, the whole it's reason cool. we the whole reason we do this is for you guys, and we're thankful that you listen and you yeah. download and you watch. Because I'm still amazed if, at the number of people who listen to this. Yeah, like, it's because so if you cool. don't, we can't yeah. do this. No. So it no. means a lot, and we are very grateful and humbled when you do come up and, and talk to us and are excited to see us because it, it really does mean a lot. Never be afraid uh, to ask a question. Yeah. Come up, say so hi. So next, next show, yeah. Mobile Tech Expo in January right. in Orlando. We are going to be there. So do the same thing. Those of you that are going down there, come see us. Come say hi. Come shake our hands. Uh, we're gonna have some fun. So, yeah. yep, It'll be a good time. No, that's cool. that's awesome. That's so, <clears throat> I guess that pretty much does it then, huh, guys? Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, as always, just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. If you're on YouTube or listening, if you're on any of the any number of, of platforms we're on, here. From iTunes, Stitchers, Stitchers, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, any of that stuff. ShoutEngine.com is where they're all based. So if you'd like to yep. download it, go there. Just search the Rag Company podcast. And anyway, guys, I guess we're yeah. saying farewell till next yeah. week. See you guys. Have fun. All right. Thanks. Have a good one.